Welcome to Sharing in the Middle, where recovering perfectionists, overachievers, and anyone in the middle of a struggle come together to learn to embrace the messy middles of life. I'm Lacey, your friend in the middle and guide, who doesn't really have a claim to fame this week, and we're going to talk about it. Today is a mini episode, which typically looks pretty structured, where we, I read an essay from the middle, then I answer an advice question, and then talk about my Lacey loves. But I gotta be honest, friends, that structure just isn't feeling good to me anymore. And I'm learning continually that I am the most successful when something feels right. And so today we're going to try some stuff out. Maybe it's good, maybe it's not. (laughs) But if you're here and along for the ride, I appreciate you greatly. I ultimately have settled on this idea of maybe letting you in a little bit more on my writing process mostly because my writing process has a really big block right now. And I wish, I wish I could tell you why. I really think it has to do with just my mind being everywhere. And the shoulds of life are really just kicking me down. And that's okay. And that's okay. If you've been listening to the podcast or No Shame in the Home Game at all lately, you know that my family is going through a really exciting time of change. My husband switched jobs. We're going to be moving. We're in the process of buying and selling houses. I'm so excited about the direction our lives are moving in. I'm seeing, I can see the change. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's there. But the process of getting there is so challenging. I mean, it's the messy middle and I suck at the middle, right? I mean, that's why I started. (laughs) So right now we are doing things like appraisals and inspections, all of these different things. And some things are working out perfectly, better than I could even imagine. And then other things that I took relatively for granted are popping up out of nowhere. And my chronic illness is, it's a bigger problem. Like I knew, I knew it was going to be a problem. Of course I knew it was going to be a problem. But when you're staring down the list of things that need to be done, knowing you can't take care of 90% of them, woof, I just really am struggling with that idea quite a bit. You know, our house, our house is beautiful and wonderful. I love the house that we are currently in, but it just isn't fitting for our life right now. And with my husband's new job, we also have this opportunity of buying a new house that will fit our life and our family better. We found a house that we loved. Not even the initial one that I was talking about in No Shame in the Home Game. It's a different house. The other one, things just didn't work out. And this one, have been working out. And I just look at it and I can't wait to go there because it's going to feel like our home. And that I am so excited about. I'm excited to make my kids' rooms feel like theirs. I'm excited to create spaces that my husband and I want to be in. So it's exciting. Our current home, though, we have always taken care of the big things. The little things maybe haven't gotten taken care of as much as they should have. So there are a lot of little things around here that we just need to touch up, paint, spackle, add molding to, those kinds of things that make a difference. They make a difference when someone's walking through your home and seeing it as potentially theirs. And I can't do those things. Repetitive movements and arm strength is really one of the things that I struggle with most day to day. Things like brushing my teeth are very challenging. And I know that sounds so silly when you don't understand, but if you take a moment and really think about brushing your teeth is two minutes of constantly moving your arm back and forth pretty much. And I can't lift my arm for two minutes. That is really challenging for me. So how in the world am I going to paint a bathroom or repair a ceiling? I just can't do it. And those are the things that need to be done. And that is so hard for me because I'm a doer. I'm not great at physical labor. Don't get me wrong. We learned that very early on in my life. But if things need to be done, I do want to take care of them, and I can't. I'm trying my best with all the other stuff, and every once in a while, I push myself to pack a box, and 
I'm successful. I make progress. But then I have to lay down for an hour afterwards because the energy output that does for me. And it feels ridiculous. It feels so ridiculous. I'm sharing all this, one, because I don't, I didn't know pre-chronic illness, the little things that would become a problem for me later on. I just, I challenge you today, every time you use your arms to lift, every time you bend over, those are all things that are very challenging for me at this point in my chronic illness. I have orthostatic intolerance, which means that being upright often causes me to have additional problems. I have difficulty getting warm. Well, if I lift my arms over my head, there's going to probably be some problems. So you can imagine things like showering where it's warm and you're washing your hair, lifting your arms over your head is a challenge. I I am constantly amazed at how much my chronic illness changes my life. There's the things on the outside. So I don't really drive anymore. I probably, honestly, I could drive more than I do. But I'd rather be safe than sorry. I also don't want to be sick in public. And that's the thing I got to get over. I don't mind sharing with you today, listener, because you're hearing from me directly. You are hearing from my perspective and I can give you context and nuance. And if you then decide that I'm a lazy piece of shit after that, eh, that's your prerogative, whatever. But to go out into society and that the people around you don't know those things about you, they will jump to those conclusions. And they will because I used to. Absolutely. I just think all the times I was so ableist and I just don't want to deal with that. It's also really energy draining. Friday, we had some things come back with an appraisal that, that's causing some problems with our loan. We're working on it. It's fine. Joe and my kid and his parents went out to do things and then they came back. And I was having a panic attack because of this stuff because the appraisal could impact us, our ability to get a loan. A big deal. And I went downstairs for two minutes to be around the five of them. And I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Oh, I might cry. I couldn't be in that state that I was in of high, high anxiety and panic and be around anybody, period, anybody. But anybody that I had to give of myself really in any way. Just parents are lovely. I love them very much. They love me. But just, I couldn't do it. So the being around sick or on other people is just hard. But yes, I <laughs> went down a little bit of a rabbit hole there. I know it's all going to work out. I do. I, I feel it in my bones. I feel the certainty of it. I also have the privilege of being a white lady who's middle to upper middle class. I don't know where upper middle class starts, but my parents have my back. My family has my back. It'll all get taken care of. Oh, I'll get to But the middle of this, the process, oh boy, wearing me down. I'm realizing now that I essentially just kind of did a, a spoken word version of what I would write down, which is nice. I do feel like I keep saying the same things over and over again. But maybe, dear listener, if you keep trying and listening, the one way that I say it a little bit differently will resonate with you and help you see. I share to make one one other person feel heard or seen. I share because maybe you hearing my story will help you understand somebody else's down the line. And I share for myself. Absolutely. I'm a talker. And doing this allows me to talk even when I'm alone at home and enjoying that solitude. My hope is that we figure out a space for other people to have that same outlet. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm figuring it out. Life keeps coming at me, though. Here's the thing. The community I want to build requires buy-in. And not necessarily, like, money buy-in, but it requires people. I almost want to make people go through a course, foundational information, 
as a way to not have to have like super strict rules in a community, but that we all come in with the same foundation of information. And if issues arise, we can all go back to that information and see how our actions either didn't live up to it or did. It's so funny. I keep having this, what the struggle that I'm having of actually setting up this community, because I have mild structure in place and I could just launch something. But the reality is I want a community that doesn't have to rely on rules, but can rely on individual responsibility and that we all use our responsibility and come in with the same knowledge about that responsibility. It's the thing of I don't like being told what to do, but I love having information to use to make my best decisions possible. All right. You've gotten about, what, 15 minutes of me basically treating this as a diary, so hopefully that works for someone. I, as someone who loves podcasts and listens to them, it is not lost on me the intimacy of someone in your ear talking. And the fact that anyone would get to this point and say, oh, thanks for talking to me, Lacey has made my day. And it's corny, but I'm corny. If you haven't figured out that I'm corny, I may not be the gal for you. But I am just so grateful and thankful for this opportunity to be in your ear today. We have another interview coming next week, so I'm going to keep lining those up. We'll keep messing around with mini episodes and seeing what feels good. If you have thoughts about today's mini episode, seriously, reach out to me. I would love to hear of, yeah, we like just raw and filter lacy, or no, maybe have a little more structure. I am down to hear what you need. And so I thank you for providing me with the space for what I need. I hope you have a fantastic day. I really do. Thanks for sharing the middle with me. As always, I hope you've been able to see a little bit of yourself and the story we shared today. Don't forget to follow, share, rate, review, and follow me on social media at Lacey Shares. You can always check out the Joyful Support Movement at joyfulsupportmovement.com and see all of the amazing goodness we have there, like No Shame in the Home Game, Pops of Joy, courses, resources, and of course, the Joyful Support Village. All right, now go out there and spread some joy.